of Korea Research Institute of Ships and Ocean, Ocean Engineering, or CRISO. The topic of his presentation is development of underwater robots. Good morning. Just as introduced, my name is Yi Pan Mo. For underwater exploration, we need tools and equipment. In order to go to space, we need space shuttles and spaceships. Just like that, we need submersibles manned and unmanned in order to have an access to underwater. So within the time that I'm given, I am going to share with you the trends of manned and unmanned submersibles at home and abroad. And I'm, I'm going to talk, I'm also going to talk about what technologies you can utilize. As previously mentioned, in the East Sea, there are many living species and living organisms in the East Sea that we do not know of. And regarding the deep sea topographic information, we do not really have much of it. The East Sea also plays a very significant role in terms of its Geo geopolitical significance. And as Ulungdo is located at the center of the East Sea, if we can utilize this location, then I believe that we can be more advantageous in terms of having research activities in our search. And when there are accidents in the sea, we can be quicker in responding to these accidents. And for both of these cases, we can use manned and unmanned submersibles. Well, excuse me, I should have checked this. So when it comes to underwater robots, there are five types of underwater robots. Those that are connected through cables, these are called ROVs, and cableless ones are AUV, autonomous underwater vehicles. What Dr. Mentioned, what Dr. Park mentioned was gliders, and also for manned robots, we use robot manipulators. So this is a manned vehicle. And biomimetic underwater robots, well, you can think of in the robots in the form of crabs, jellyfish, and so on. So they take different forms. For deep sea exploration in Korea, we already looked at several cases of deep sea exploration, but I draw some timeline. The first manned submersible and equipment for that was introduced in 1986. At that time, the depth was rather shallow, only 250 meters. And the unmanned technology was introduced in 1990s with ROVs, and we have this Hemire, which was developed back in 2007. We have NDV, which is a mine hunting unmanned submersible mineral that does the collection of minerals, and also we have other unmanned submersibles that can deal with accidents. And we have this biomimetic robot, Crabster, which was developed in 2013. So let me briefly walk you through the development process of these robots. This is the Hemire robot. It can travel down to 6,000 meters 
and the weight is 4,200 kilograms, payload 200 kilograms. And using manipulators, it can carry payloads, and this can be remotely controlled. And this is how Hemiro was manufactured. For it to be operated in deep sea, we have to make sure that the, the operation is reliable and it is corrosion resistant. And also we should be able to power all the necessary equipment. Signals and power have to be connected. So this is the welding process and non-destructive inspection process that followed. And with 10 meters, there is additional one bar added. So the embedded devices and how these were cab cabled and how these were tested on land. So this, these pictures shows the brief manufacturing process. And in order to do the service control, this shows how it was ergonomically placed to do the control on land. So 6,000 meters means 600 bar. We must have to test the pressure. At the time of the development of Hemire, we didn't have hyperbaric chambers, and we got support from Japan to do the testing. And we also need these additional equipment. And now we do have hyperbaric chambers in Korea. And these chambers and this basic infrastructure is being utilized for testing in Korea now. Even though we have this infrastructure for operations and testing of this infrastructure, we'll need more support. So in order to develop such underwater robots, well, we have to check how these robots move, and we have to check whether they meet the design speed. So we do the performance test. So what you can see from the image is what hydrodynamic characteristics they show when they move. And based on this, we can come up with figure-based models and this can be applied to developing digital twin, digital twins. So what you see from the screen is from the South Sea Research Center, and they're doing the speed test. And in the case of the battery, we are checking whether the design capacity can be fully utilized. And also what's important is it has to follow the route. So basically, we have this inertial motion unit, but it also has to work with the on-land GPS. And using the acoustic positioning system, we converge these technologies so that we can be more precise in terms of te technology. And the image that I'm showing Well, it seems like I have some issues with this flicker. Using Hemire, this is the exploration of the EC. And this one is from the West Pacific. So around the forecast vent, this was how Hemire was sent to do, to do the survey around the forecast vent. And the next one is a black smoker in the West Pacific that was found below 3,000 meters underwater. It's about four meter high chimney, basically. And you can see that there is an ecosystem 
that's uh, around the chimney. And you can see the mineral particles, which are shown in black. So you can collect, collect these materials to do the survey. And also in the West and South Sea, when the water is very turbid, it's very difficult to use optical technology. And in this case, we can utilize infrared cameras to do the underwater exploration. And this is about recovery and search for iron kettles with metal detectors. So what's recovered is analyzed and processed and the samples are stored for further investigation. And this is the new type of underwater robot. So this is basically a combination of a crab and a lobster. This is called crabster. It has six legs and it's a walking robot underwater. And when it is floating on the surface, it moves like it's rowing. We have two different types to cover both 200 meters and 6,000 meters. For those areas where ROVs and AUVs cannot be very active, these crafters can be utilized and they can crawl to these areas to do the search. And this clip shows how the crapster was utilized to do the search for heritage underwater. So let me just quickly give you the idea. We are seeing the development of new types of underwater robots. This is from the United States from Nauticus Robotics, and this is the underwater robot. When it moves, it has a form of an AUV, but when it starts working, then the main body is separated into the top and bottom parts, and it looks like a cylinder to carry out its work. So it's basically a new concept applied to this particular model and it's an autonomous system. Unlike ROV that is remotely operated on the surface, this one can operate autonomously. AI is utilized for this model, and AI does the control of the movement of this robot. As other presenters mentioned, we're seeing the development of submersibles that can cover up to 11,000 meters. And also this limit factor, which is being commercialized. It is having a test navigation. And Korea also had a plan for developing such submersibles. Currently, we are in the process of comparing the advantages and disadvantages of manned and unmanned technologies so that we can choose the best technology that we need. And what we can think of is the hybrid type. We called it the Big Underwater Autonomous Robot, or UAR. And with this, We are combining manned and unmanned technologies with the support of AI. So once we go into water on the manned submersible, well, we can actually feel the site and feel what it's like to be underwater. And I actually had such an experience myself and it was miraculous to see all the living species underwater. So in the case of manned submersibles, of course, we will need to further develop this as well. But if we can combine this with the technology of unmanned submersibles, 
then we can have more future opportunities for this area. For manned technology, we have time limitation. But if we go on manned, then we would be free from this limitation and have more opportunity for the sea. Thank you.